Hello, my name is Ray Salazar, and this is Morning Real. A three to four to 100 minute or so podcast of films that I review. Today, I review everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah, the movie that everybody's been talking about. A lot of people have been wanting me to see this, to review it. You don't know how long I've been wanting to avoid reviewing it because it just never struck my attention. But I don't know. Aton's pretty good at persuading people to do things. So here I am doing it. And, you know, other people as well. But here we go. And I'm going to keep this really short. All I got to say is that you got to watch this film. It's a crazy movie. I call it an experimental drama film. I mean, there's some, com- well, not just drama. It's, there's comedy in it. So it's like an experimental dramedy film. And it's about life. Now, France, Italy, back in the day in the 40s or whatnot, all their movies were like those quote-unquote slice-of-life films where you get to see your average person struggling no matter what situation you're in. And in those days, I mean, a lot of that struggle was based off the war, you know, like World War II. So you bunch saw a bunch of Italians just struggling, trying to rebuild themselves. And French, they're going through their own societal shit between, you know, the working class and the high class and everything in between it. And it's weird because film got involved in that. But anyways, that's for another separate type of podcast. This is a 2022 American film written and directed by Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiner, collectively known as The Daniels, who produced it with Anthony and Joe Russo and Jonathan Wang. This film stars Michelle Yeoh, Stephanie Su, Ke Hui Kwan, Jenny Slate, Harry Shum Jr., James Hong, Jamie Lee Curtis. It's crazy how Wikipedia puts Jenny Slate above Jamie Lee Curtis. That's fucking crazy, but that doesn't fucking matter. Cinematography by Larkin Seipel. Edited by Paul Rogers. Music by Son Lux. Production company, IAC Films. Gozi, AGBO, Year of the Rat, Leyline Entertainment, and distributed by A24. These guys are these guys are on it, man. Now, this film is actually over a year old because it premiered, or I guess it premiered at South by Southwest, and it grossed over 135.6 million dollars. All right, here's all the technical facts. Okay, here we go. To me, this is the film of the year. Not my favorite film, but film of the year. My favorite film of last year, honestly, has to be After Sun. And if you've seen it and want to know about it, I have a review on it a couple of episodes back. Anyways, this to me is the perfect film. Everything, everywhere, all at once. The perfect film. The perfect film. You hear me talk about what the perfect film is. If y'all don't know, here's the perfect film. The perfect film encompasses all the technical and emotional aspects of a film, where it be wardrobe, production design, cinematography, lighting, editing, music, characters, the way it's written, all that, direction. If all that collectively is great, to me, it's the perfect film. Now, personally... This film, as great as it is, and it deserves most of his Oscars, except for Jamie Lee Curtis. To be honest, Stephanie Su should have got that instead of Jamie Lee Curtis. I feel like Su just went deep into this character, or characters rather, because you know what's great about this film? The, these people play like three different kinds of characters in one. Because of the way the film was written. And I don't want to spoil the film. But basically it follows this aging family. Who works and lives at a laundromat. And it's tax day. And you know it it doesn't seem like they have their shit together. And the main character of the film. Which is Evelyn. She just wants to give up on life. Just wants to give up on life. She's like. Like, should I just say, fuck this and just like run or just start a new life or something? Well, life doesn't really work that way, but you can tell and you can see it. And then somehow when 
her and her husband, or rather her quote-unquote husband, they go to the elevator to go home from an IRS meeting that did not go well. All of a sudden, shit just changes. Like, the movie finally just, like, starts in a weird way. And honestly, in the first act, it, it, it does take its time to pretty much just jump off a cliff and they have the whole audience on a rope and we're going off that cliff with them. And from that point, whatever you see, you just have to believe it. You just have to believe it. You got to have faith in it. Got to have hope in it. And that's what happened to me when I saw it. I was just hooked onto the film. I got to say, some of the fight sequences are a bit like too long and maybe just a tad exaggerated. But we're in a film where the multiverse is just going in and out of each dimension and verses and all that crap. So it's like you are expected to see the unexpected. And it's funny because this film is sort of a spoon fed film until a certain part of the film where it's kind of like no holds bar. Anything can happen. And the success of just that energy is really not just not just due to the direction and how the characters like just move themselves towards the film and you know throughout the film editing plays a just honestly like if it not were the editing or the type of editing it, it had this would have been a shit film or a boring film but the editing is just so on point you can just tell that these people this crew just put their whole selves like just everything together it's a great premise it's a great story Evelyn decides to basically break all the rules of her life which in fact breaks all the rules in the multiverse and gives her a perspective she's never had before which kind of leaves her questioning which kind of makes us think about who we are in our lives and what we want or what we could have had you know that's the whole purpose of that film people are struggling man and there's some people who don't even know about it whether they give a fuck or not or rather those who know it and don't realize it that's fucked up i bet there are certain folks out there watching this film who who are probably watching it from their yacht or whatever i'm I, I hope it gives them a perspective, you know, but probably not. But I hope it does because there's some people who just start from nothing, you know, and end up being nothing. And there are those who make it. But sometimes those who make it, because they made the right decision, whether they had to be alone or they had to do it with somebody else to make it happen. And it gives us that question like, are we doing good in life? Are we doing good in life? Is this where we want to be? Could we strive for more? And the answer is yes. We could always strive for more. This film gives you that hope that you can do whatever you want. Obviously, there's no rules. I mean, there's rules, but there's no rules as to like how you want to do it, you know? Like, do you do it the way you want to do it? But make sure you do it and you put in that 100%. You can be 60 years old and you can still make a movie or do the things that you wanted to do when you weren't 60, when you were in your 20s, when you were a kid, you know? It doesn't have to be a career. It could be like a bucket list type of item, but you can do it. And that's what I got out of this film. And, you know, it got me emotional, man, because it's like the, the Daniels, they know. They know about struggle. They know what it is to, like, be in a certain type of mood or be in a certain type of like environment and it's just really up to us to surpass ourselves and surpass the environments that we're within and we can't let nobody tell us how we should do it you know only we can decide that and do it with love because that's the whole thing about this film too this film shows you love it shows you how to use love how to use it to your advantage, not to manipulate, because there's a lot of manipulation, and that's what's great about it too. Great acting, but just like, just using it for the good, man. And this what what this world needs too, man. And I know it sounds like, oh, you're being a utopian and all that crap. Like, well, what the fuck, dude? Like, don't you want 
don't you want a better world than what it is right now? Seriously. Whether you're living good or not, don't you want it better? Because right now it's not good. Everywhere. Name one place where it's good besides like Switzerland or, you know, all those countries where they have like, you know, low homelessness, you know, low like people who doesn't who don't work jobs, you know, people who don't have jobs, you know, that that rate, you know, but over here, everywhere else, all at once, haha. Yeah, we need we we need something here, man. And um hopefully we can all work together or come together to make it a better place. Especially for the generations, you know, that come after us. Cause there is generational trauma as a topic in that film too. And it's important to enlighten those who are before us, who are younger than us, because guess what? They're going to take over, whether they like it or not. My name is Ray Salazar. Follow me, Morning Shot Films, IG, and YouTube. Rate and review this podcast called Morning Real. And check out my other episodes. This is on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeart, Spreaker, YouTube. Just type in my name on Google, type in Morning Real, and boom, you'll see it. Thank you. On to the next one.